Hare Krishna. Study the Gita not to inform the head but to transform the heart. Now the Gita does inform the head, no doubt. It provides us a lot of information and especially it provides us far better information about the meaning and purpose of life than does the best university education. However, the Gita's purpose is not to provide information as an end in itself. Its purpose in providing information is to guide us to awaken our love for Krishna, the all attractive Supreme Person. Because in that love for Krishna, we will attain eternal life, eternal happiness. We are souls who <coughs> can return to Krishna when we learn to love Him. So, this is the primary purpose of the Gita. And its whole narrative is meant to illustrate that, meant to take us towards that point. Now, when we study the Gita, the Gita's essential message, this call for love, is trans-historical. It is eternal and applicable for all people at all times. But still, it is spoken at a particular historical moment. And <coughs> that moment, it doesn't change its substance, but it still does affect its form. What does it mean? No. If we are speaking in speaking say to people who know Gujarati, know the language, then we may speak the same message of the Gita, but the form will be Gujarati. If we are speaking to people who are say uh, very educated and say scientists, then we will use scientific examples. We're speaking to say a little bit less educated villagers, then we will use examples of that kind. So, the important point is that we all have, we, the message is presented, the same message is presented according to audience. So, the, at the time when the Gita was spoken, people's social mores, the way the uh, society was organized, their political structures, how, what kind of rulers were there, and their cosmological conceptions, you know, that there, uh, that what all were the celestial uh, objects and what all was inhabit or uh, occupying, populating the cosmos, all those conceptions are different from ours. And uh, naturally Krishna refers to those things to illustrate his message. And that such illustrations make the Gita's message intelligible to its original audience. But what makes the Gita intelligible at that time can make it seem unintelligible to us at the present time. And this obstacle, such incomprehension, may stall us especially in the Gita's 10th chapter. It's called Vibhuti Yoga. In that chapter, Krishna ex explains how the various things that attract people, those that attract that attract people, which kind of materially minded people, that whatever even materially minded people are attracted to, those things actually manifest a spark of Krishna's splendor. And in that sense, even they can, by connecting those things to Krishna, let them let those things become reminders of Krishna. So now, uh, we can try to understand those things. But actually, uh, it may not be possible for us to enter into that world view coming as we do from a different social, political and cosmological background. Our frame of reference is different. So, and we might just, our efforts to understand the Gita might get stalled over there. Now significantly the Gita gives the principle for all these examples towards the end of the 10th chapter. In 10.41 it says, Yad yad vibhuti matsattvam shri madurjita mevava tattadeva vagachattvam mamatejo amshasambhava 
So whatever is attractive in this world that manifests a spark of my splendor. And the previous words to this actually uh, says another important thing also. So he says, Krishna says that Nantostimama Divyana, that there is no end to this, Vibhuti, which are divine. Eshatu Deshatha Prokta, Eshatu Studdeshatha Prokta, and Vibhuti Vistaromaya. That is a Vistar, the elaborate opulences are there, and I am just Tuddeshatha, I am just giving a sample to you. So in this way, one can understand that the details are not important. They are downplayed over there and the principle is emphasized just in the next verse. So similarly, <coughs> now by emphasizing the, what would emphasizing the principle and downplaying the details mean for us? Now, rather than trying to understand all the details of what attracted people then and why, we can better strive to understand what attracts us now and how we can redirect attract our attraction from those things to Krishna. And such retraction, such redirection alone will actually awaken our love for Krishna and thereby grant us life eternal, which is the essential gift of the Gita for all of us. Thank you. Hare Krishna.